Good morning, everybody. I'm really excited about today's story that I'm sharing with you. It is probably my most favorite gospel story. Um, but first, I wanted to talk about how everything is totally different now than what we're used to. Um, a lot of you guys have not been going to school, and none of you guys have been going to school, um, and won't be for the rest of the school year. Most of us aren't going to work, we're staying home, we're not going to playgrounds, we're not going to friends' houses. And there's a lot of things in our life that we probably have never used, like a mask. Um, there are things that we probably didn't use very much, like Clorox wipes, hand sanitizer, everybody's really concerned with washing their hands, which is great and we should be doing anyways. And all of this is because of something that we cannot even see, right? Germs are so small, they are so tiny that we can't see them with our eyes. We can't feel them with our hands, but we know that they're there. And so we do all these things to keep us safe. Um, and because of that, we've been spending all of our time at home. We've been having to stay inside. That's why we're in my playroom today because since we can't go to the park and we can't go to friends' houses, we spend a lot of time in our playroom right now so that we have somewhere to play, especially if dad is in a meeting and we have to be quiet, we come in here and we play. Now our story today is about when the disciples were also having to spend a lot of time at home. And it was for a different reason. They weren't scared of germs. Um, they were scared for their safety. Jesus had just died on the cross. Um, so our story today is from right after the resurrection. Okay, and the disciples are all together in their house. I'll show you the picture to start before I read. The disciples were hiding in a house the night Jesus rose from the dead. They were afraid. Bam, they locked all the doors. Jesus came and stood by them. Peace be with you, he said. The disciples looked up in surprise. Jesus showed them his hands and his side so that they would know that it was him. The disciples were very happy. And again, Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. God has sent me to you. Now it's your turn to go and tell the rest of the world about me. Jesus breathed on them in a very special way. And he said, with this breath, I will always be in your hearts, even when I am in heaven. You now have the power to do the things I've asked you to do. Thomas was the only disciple not there that night. And when he got back, the others excitedly told him about Jesus's visit. Now look at this picture. How does Thomas look in this picture? Does he look excited about their news? Hmm. I don't believe you, Thomas said. I'll believe when I can touch Jesus' wounds. A week later, Thomas and the other disciples were in the same house. Jesus came again and stood with them. Peace be with you, he said to them. Thomas, Jesus commanded, come here, give me your hands. Put your finger on the wounds in my hand. Put your hand by the wound in my side. Do not doubt anymore. It's time for you to believe. Thomas's eyes popped. My Lord and my God, he exclaimed. And Jesus answered him, you believe because I'm here with you and you've seen me. Think of those who have not seen me but believe in me anyway. You should believe even when you cannot see it for yourself. Look how excited Thomas is to see Jesus for himself. I can only imagine what that felt like. They had been so sad and so afraid after Jesus died and he came back and he showed himself to them. Um, and what I love about this story is that Thomas had a lot of questions, didn't he? He wasn't so sure about this. He wasn't sure that he believed. And Jesus came and he answered his questions for him. He showed him his, his hands. He showed him his side and he cared so much for Thomas. Now, Sometimes we um, have to believe in things that we can't see. We talked about earlier how there's all these germs around that we can't see, but we know that they're there. We know that they make people sick, right? We can see evidence of it, even if we can't see it ourselves. 
Well, Jesus is not something we have to be scared of. He's not something we have to be worried about. But we can't see Jesus, right? That's what it was talking about here when he told Thomas, you can see me and so you believe, but blessed are those who do not see me and they believe. We don't see Jesus for ourselves, right? He doesn't come and sit right next to me and show me his hands and show me his side. But I know that he's there. I know that Jesus is, is doing work all around us. I can see evidence of it in the world around me. And he says, blessed are you because you believe. Um, so I want, I have a, a worksheet for you guys that I'm going to post that I want y'all to do together as a family. The first thing I want y'all to think about is how precious that Jesus took Thomas's question and he didn't say, shame on you, Thomas, for not believing. Your friends all told you I was here. Why do you have these questions? You've been with me all this time. Do you really have to ask those questions? No, he said, it's okay. And he came and he answered his questions for him. So God welcomes our questions. And there's a lot of questions that we'll probably have for the rest of our life that we won't have the answers to until we go to heaven. And there's other questions that we might ask and you can take those questions to your parents. You can take those questions to your kids church, kids church teachers or your or Pastor Sam to try to find answers for him. Um, or God might show you answers in another way. And, and that's awesome. And so ask these questions together as a family. Um, so at the top of this worksheet, there's a there's a place for you to write some questions that you have for God. And our family spent some time talking about this. One question was, when did the dinosaurs live? Or what has heaven like? Um, God, did you make yourself? These are such good questions. One question was, how did you make the world in six days? And another question was, was it really six days? These are really good questions for us to ask and to wonder together. Um, the second thing that I want you to do is to think about how, even though we can't see God, we can see him, evidence of him around us, just like the wind. We can't see the wind, but I see the leaves moving on the trees, right? Or I feel it on my skin. Um, and so think about how you see God in the world, how you see evidence of God, just like Jesus let Thomas touch his hands and touch his sides. In what ways do Jesus and God show you, show themselves to you. And so I want you to draw a picture of where you see evidence of God. And Anna did an example for us and she drew some really beautiful things. She said she sees God in, um, in love, how people love each other. She sees God um, in people, in, in their lives, um, or in nature. She drew a tree for nature. I'm trying to remember what this one is. Mm, I'm gonna have to ask her about this one because I can't remember what this one was. But she had some really um, just, oh, in the wind, I think she said. She feels God in the wind. So um, anyways, I want you to do this together as a family. Think about some questions that you have for God um, and talk about those as a family. And then think about the ways that you see God and you see Jesus in the world around you. Um, so that's my story for today. Um, that even, even when we have questions, God shows us his love. Um, and he shows himself to us. And so we can take that from, from this story about Thomas. I love this picture of him, how sad and upset he was. But then think about just how wonderful and how exciting it is when Jesus shows himself to us, how much he loves us. All right, let's pray, friends. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you are close to us, even when we cannot see you. So God, during this time, I pray that you would show us your love, that we would see you all around us. And I thank you, God, that you take our questions and that you love us for it. God, thank you so much for this time. We pray all this in your son's holy and righteous name, amen. All right, guys, I would love to see the stuff that you put on your, on your drawings. You could post it to our Facebook page or you could send me an email. Um, and hope to see you guys at our kids' church hangout on Friday at 3. Love you guys. I'll see y'all later.